Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about very large stars. And not just large stars, but massive stars. As a matter of fact, I actually wanted to kind of help you understand how a mass of a star is a lot more important than its size. So we're going to compare the biggest star we found, UI Scuti, with the most massive, R136A1. Welcome to What The Math. So if you've been on the channel long enough, or if you've studied astronomy to some extent, you probably know that one of the biggest, if not the biggest by size star that we've discovered so far is known as UI Scuti. It is a star that if you were to place it in the middle of our solar system, would essentially swallow most of the planets, except for maybe Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus. It's this big, but here is the thing that uh, most uh, science articles, or not science articles, but I guess uh, newspapers or magazines or online journals don't really mention. It doesn't necessarily look like this. As a matter of fact, it's more of a cloud than it is an actual star. It's sort of uh, a very, very thin layer of plasma that is very difficult for us to imagine because we've never seen anything like it. But what I'm trying to say here is that its density is extremely low. It is, as a matter of fact, uh, close to a million times lower than our own sun. And when you compare it to the most massive star we found, it's about four and a half million times uh, less dense. And the most massive star that I'm going to place here as well, just because why not? We've already destroyed our solar system, so might as well finish the job. And this is the most massive star we've discovered so far. It's known as R136A1. I'm actually just going to place them in binary orbit around one another. Uh, it's not as big as you can see, but it is ridiculously massive. Its mass is about 315 times bigger than the mass of the sun. And um, it is extremely bright, extremely powerful, very energetic, and is uh, responsible for creating one of the brightest um, nebula in our night sky known as the Tarantula Nebula in a nearby galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. This star is basically the record holder so far, and uh, when, and I guess if it one day becomes a red giant similar to UISQT, it will be so big that, well, actually let's find out how big it is. This is kind of what I, why I wanted to make this video. I wanted to see what this star one day might become. Now, it's currently known as a wolf Rayet star, so it's basically in its last days because before transforming into something else, uh, and it's quite possible that it might turn into this, at least um, hypothetically. Or it might just completely explode and create a black hole instead. So we're not really sure what's going to happen just yet. What we are sure about, though, is that um, it's relatively dense, it's relatively massive, and if you were to place it right here in the middle, as you can see, UI Scooty would actually assume orbit around it. So right now we have a system where this star is the center of everything and everything is essentially attracted to it. So let's actually modify this a little bit and let's do some math here. So first of all, the, like I said before, the actual difference in density is four and a half million times. Because density is um, mass divided by volume and volume is uh, in meters cube, that means that we actually have to take a cubic root of four and a half million to try to get the value by which we have to change uh, the size of the star to actually get uh, the actual size here. And the answer is about 165. So this means that we need to create a star that's approximately 24.8 astronomical units in radius. Now that is a very, very, very large star. As a matter of fact, I'm going to actually move this a little bit to the side before we do this. Um, and so let's just see how big it gets. 24 and uh, almost 25, essentially. 24.8 astronomical units is this big. Now, still maybe not as dramatic as uh, I originally expected it to be when I started making this video. But nevertheless, this is a tremendously large star. It will also be a different color, of course. So we might need to actually correct this a little bit. Uh, change its color to something a little bit more acceptable, like red. And this is what it might actually look like in uh, a few million years. Uh, 
Now, uh, our 136 a one does not really have much time left before it goes supernova, but um, hopefully human beings are still around, because when it does create supernova, it's probably going to be one of the brightest, if not the brightest supernova we've seen in a very long time, and it's most likely going to generate such a powerful uh, explosion that... In essence, it's going to be the brightest object in the night sky, except for the sun and the moon, for uh, at least a few months. I'm having trouble exploding right now. I think I'm clicking on the wrong thing. There we go. So, as you can see, the flash was so bright that um, it would actually be visible probably even in a day, uh, during the daylight. In, in a, during daytime, you could possibly see this very bright spot in the sky for at least a few months and after this is going to dim and slowly disappear and turn into basically what you see here which is a nebula so that's kind of um really all i wanted to do in this video i wanted to kind of explain to you that when it comes to star sizes the actual size really doesn't matter it's really the mass that matters the mass is extremely important and as you can see when this star exploded at the end it left um a black hole and that's probably what's going to happen in real life as well. Now, what I want to do uh, before we finish this video is I actually want to place this R136A1 off the future into the middle of our solar system just to see what happens. I mean, we can kind of imagine what happens, but let's find out what happens because why not, right? So first of all, as you can see, um, it's a little bit, well, okay, not a little bit, but quite bigger than the sun but it's also way more dense and way, way more massive. And so we're actually are going to pretend that it actually expanded and it's going to expand pretty slow, actually. It's going to be a relatively slow and um, relatively persistent expansion, which I don't have time for. So we're going to do this manually by typing 24.8 and seeing what happens. Now, if you know the size of our solar system, and if you actually know the distances here, pretty much almost everything is going to be swallowed. Except, of course, for Neptune. Neptune is going to be the only lucky survivor until it basically collides with the star because it's uh, very, very massive. Everything else is going to be gone right away, including, of course, our planet Earth. So that's our 136A1 as essentially a red giant, which it might become one day if we wait long enough. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video and hopefully you learned something from it. And let's actually see how bright the flash is from this uh, supernova and what it might look like from a distance. Ready, steady, and go. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.